Hey everyone, Houston Math Prep here to work out the formulas for derivative of inverse sine and inverse cosine functions in this video, and then we'll also work some examples of doing derivatives with inverse sine and inverse cosine. If we want to know what the derivative of the inverse sine of x is, and we don't know that yet, so what we're saying is if we have some function y equals inverse sine of x, we want to find the derivative of that. What is the formula for that? Now remember, if we have y equals inverse sine of x, another way to write that is to say that sine of y is equal to x. If we have sine of y is equal to x, that's actually telling us information about a right triangle, treating y as an angle inside of the right triangle. Remember that sine of something is the opposite side over the hypotenuse side. So sine of y being opposite over hypotenuse, if I take this x on the other side and write it as a fraction, thinking of it as x over 1, then x is my opposite side and 1 is my hypotenuse in my right triangle. I can use Pythagorean theorem that says this side squared plus the side I don't know squared equals the hypotenuse squared. And that allows me to solve that the other side I'm missing is the square root of 1 minus x squared. So now let's move to the derivative part of figuring out this formula. So we rewrote our y equals inverse sine of x as sine of y equals x. So let's go ahead and take the derivative of that equation now using implicit differentiation, differentiating the left side and then the right side. So the derivative of sine y is going to be cosine y, but since it actually contains a y term, then the chain rule tells us that we'll need to also multiply by dy dx or y prime. The derivative of the other side is simply just 1, and that side doesn't involve y, so we're finished with the right side. If I want to now solve for dy dx, we said we wanted to find dy dx, then I'll just need to divide both sides by cosine y. We get that dy dx is equal to 1 over cosine y. Now my original function, y equals inverse sine of x, was in terms of x, and this is in terms of y. So let's get this back in terms of x. The way we'll do this is we'll actually go back to our right triangle that we set up from the beginning. So remember that cosine y is going to be the adjacent side over the hypotenuse in the right triangle with y as the angle. So the adjacent side is actually our root here. The hypotenuse is 1, so we get the square root over 1, giving us that the cosine of y in the bottom is that square root. So we get the formula dy dx equals 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. We can do a similar thing trying to find the derivative of inverse cosine if we think of y equals inverse cosine of x and we want to find dy dx. We'll do the same thing and think of y equals inverse cosine x as cosine of y equals x. Setting up our right triangle again with y as an angle. Now remember that cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse side, so our x over 1 now, we get x as the adjacent and 1 as the hypotenuse. Our missing side over here then that we don't know if we use Pythagorean theorem to solve is the root that we had before. And now we move to the derivative process the same way we did before. So we think of taking the derivative with respect to x of the entire function, cosine y equals x. This will be implicit differentiation again. So if we take the derivative with respect to x of cosine y, we'll get negative sine y. But remember, the chain rule will also give us derivative of the inside, so we'll get times dy dx equal to the derivative of x is just 1 like before, and then dividing like we did before, we get that dy dx is equal to negative 1 over sine y. Now if we go back to our right triangle to get things in terms of x, we think of sine y, remember, as opposite over hypotenuse in the triangle, our opposite being the root now and the hypotenuse being 1, so opposite over hypotenuse would just be the root, and the bottom of this fraction becomes the square root of 1 minus x squared. So you can see we got the same formula but with the opposite sign when we found the derivative of inverse cosine of x. So we've got our formulas here up in the corner side by side. You can see that they're super similar. We're going to go ahead and find some derivatives and involve some chain rule in these. So make sure you've seen the chain rule before you do these. We have the derivative with respect to x of inverse sine of 2x. So the thing inside of our function we're taking the inverse sine is no longer x, it's now 2x. So I'll go ahead and I'll use this formula here. The derivative of inverse sine of something is 1 over the square root of 1 minus that something squared. So that means for this one here, we'll have 1 over the square root of 1 minus whatever's inside of the inverse sine function, all squared. And then remember the chain rule says we also need to multiply by the derivative of the inside, and the derivative of 2x is 2. 
So when we do some simplifying here, two times one on the top will give us two. And then in the bottom, we really have the square root of one minus four X squared. Don't forget to square the two and the X. So that is the derivative of inverse sine of two X. Let's look over here at the derivative with respect to X of inverse cosine of X plus three. So now this formula, we have a negative out front. So we'll say negative one over. Now we start our square root one minus whatever's inside squared. So it'll be one minus X plus three all squared. Now, chain rule times the derivative of the inside, the derivative of x plus three, the derivative of x is just one, and the derivative of plus three is zero. So we get to times one, doesn't really change anything here, right? So if we go ahead and just say then negative one over the square root of one minus the quantity x plus three all squared. Remember that inverse sine and inverse cosine can also be called arc sine or arc cosine. You may have seen those terms before. So this is again just saying the inverse sine of x squared. So let's go ahead and use our inverse sine formula. So this will be one over the square root of one minus whatever's inside of this function squared. So that's going to be x squared squared and then the chain rule says take the derivative of the inside, so we'll multiply by the derivative of x squared, which is 2x. And if we clean this up, we'll get 2x on top. And on the bottom, we will have the square root of 1 minus x squared squared would be x to the 4 for this one. Looking at our last one, the derivative of this is the same as inverse cosine of 4x cubed. So we'll be using the negative formula here, so negative 1 over square root of one minus this thing in here squared. So square root of one minus four X cubed all squared. Chain rule says times the derivative of the inside stuff. So the derivative here would be power rule. The three comes out, multiplies there. We get 12 and the power goes down by one. So we get X squared out there. So we'll clean this up and say negative. We get 12 X squared on the top. And on the bottom, we get the square root of one minus, just be careful here, 16 X cubed squared would be X to the six. Okay, hopefully that helps you see where these formulas come from and also gives you a chance to work through a couple examples of these. Check out our next video on the derivatives of inverse tangent and inverse cotangent. Thanks for watching everybody. We'll see you in the next video.